New York's number one for throwbacks. What's up, everybody? I am LA Key. We are live on LA Key in the afternoon. We have a very special guest with us. Her name is Liddy. She is already here. We are going to get into it right away. So she's not only going to tell her story, but I'm going to get into some hot topics right with Liddy. Liddy, how are you today? <laughs> I'm right, right in this moment. I'm telling you exactly uh, how I feel. I feel like you know, again, I'm 54. I feel like there's, you know, that moment where everything just makes sense. Mm. You know, the little little breakthrough, this just all makes sense. Wow. Um, I love your music. Thank wow. you for playing. You know, I, I, I need music to, to bring me anywhere. So listening wow. to that really inspired me, man. That's wow. really good stuff. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. That's just good. Music energy. is medicine. <laughs> Music is medicine. Yes, it definitely is. Well, today is Friday. Happy Friday to everyone, everyone that is listening. Listen, today, um, I'm just going to call it Grateful Friday. All week I've been calling days something. Today is Grateful Friday. Lady, I got to ask you, ask you, what are you grateful for? <sighs> you know, I'm grateful for life. Mm -hmm. uh, first day, you know, first and foremost, because, the most you know, yeah, I could, I could, you know, I could not be here. Mm -hmm. So life, but I'm really grateful for the culture. I'm not going to say, I know I, I, I am, I got to tell you, I told you hip hop, you know, saved my life. I'm grateful wow. for music. Uh, you know, I function on music. I really do. If I could, I'm one of those people that, you know, the beats music, uh, you know, is capable of making me go through the day. Wow. So definitely and I hip hop music. <laughs> I can really tell that you're serious, that music really, really impacts you and makes you feel like you come alive when music is on, huh? I can't explain the power of music. I don't even think we really understand. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, music should be brought back in a big way in schools, first mm -hmm. of all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm neurodivergent, meaning I have ADHD. Um, so Again, where people with a different brain, our brain function differently. And music is known to create dopamine, you know, in your brain to help dopamine, to produce dopamine. Mm -hmm. uh, and we really need that. So uh, to penalize a lot of these kids with the beats at school. No, it, music, you know, should be utilized to educate. Mm -hmm. I learn, you know, I learn faster if it's in music, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll absorb the message. Yeah, definitely. And you know what? I wanted to say, even on Friday, just talking about, you know, the reason I'm here. Shouts out to the Matrix Studios and yes. Party 101.9. Everybody <laughs> that made this possible to allow us to talk with people like, you know, Liddy, who loves music and gives us these amazing platforms to bring, you know, tell these amazing stories and to play the music, which is 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 important. I wanted to ask you, um, there's a lot of things going on because we're in the hot topic section of the of the show. Um, um, are you, you know, being at your lover of music, was it, Wendy Williams an impact on you in any way? Oh my God. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I was going to say, it's funny. It's not funny. It's sad. Uh, it's funny that you asked because literally I was reading yesterday. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, you know, she has aphasia and also yes. dementia. And I was really reading about that because I've been having my own little issues, mm. uh, you know, um, and certain things that neurologically you can kind of tell that, you know, there might be some decline. So I actually went and checked with my neurologist doing all kinds of little tests. Everything you know, was good? Yeah, for, so far good. so good, but um, very sad, yeah, very Wendy sad, Williams, you know. Right? Yeah. Yes, I'm mm -hmm. sad for, listen, she brought a lot, mm -hmm. uh, you know, she's uh, one powerful woman. Yes. Um, you know, to be in that position, you know, you, you see already, right? Yeah. It's not, a, you know, not everybody can can uh, do, you know, what she did. Yes. Um, I feel bad. I feel bad. I mm -hmm. see that she's, uh, you know, you see it. Yeah. You know? Is it like she's declining? Yes. Yeah. Just, yeah, the energy. Yeah. yeah. I actually, it's so funny you brought that up. I, I spoke yesterday on dementia. She's back in the news again where they're suing um, people in regards to, to, did you see that already too? To the, to the, the, um, the uh, diagnosis? Um, well, they're suing uh, for the networks for, um, to be specific, they're suing the networks. Yes. So it says um, Guardian for Wendy Williams reportedly files lawsuit 
uh, ahead of Lifetime doc premiere. So what is going on is, according to the reports, The Guardian has filed a lawsuit against A&E television networks just days ahead of the release of Winnie's upcoming Tell All documentary. Um, and so funny because we, my husband and I, we just watched the Lifetime movie. So I got more familiar with Wendy because, to be honest, I didn't, I, I knew her show and, you know, I would catch it probably sometimes, but I wasn't like following her career, like from yeah. LA. I, I didn't follow it yeah. like that. So I got a chance to really, really tap in. And I thought the Lifetime movie was beautiful. Like I see what I she did. I haven't watched that. We'll watch it now. Yes. On Lifetime on Prime. I got a chance to watch it about two weeks ago and it really made me feel more connected to her. And so I've just literally been watching everything. Wendy, I hate that I'm just now tapping in more yeah. with her because now she's, as we mentioned, know. you know, with the dementia. And I think, you know, also, uh, you know, we in America, we tend to build people up and, you know, put them on a pedestal when they're just humans. And then we tear, tear them down. Now we, you know, with this yeah. cancel culture, we tear people down overnight. Yeah. And I don't think that helped her immune system to be under this continuous, you know, scrutiny and people were making fun of her, you know. All sorts of things. Like yeah. she, she also had the grave disease. Yes. That is, and so all yes. of these things, and it just yes. started to just yeah, all right? kind of, you know, I, I don't like to see the unraveling yes. in that way of of anybody. Period. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, it's it's so unfortunate. It's necessary. You know. Yes. It doesn't empower me. It doesn't empower, and and that's what you know. My show is all about. It's all about empowerment, and so you know. With that being said, I just want to definitely just send our prayers to Lin, uh to Wendy and to keep yeah. her lifted. You know, yes. because I think she needs a lot of prayer. I, I think there's nothing. She needs to hang pray. out with us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she's yeah. a fun. She's a fun girl. She definitely. See her out. Yeah, she's yeah. so fun. Like yes. I when I watched her. She was like at her height when it showed her journey on the Lifetime movie. She's full of energy like you. Yeah. You know, it's energy. it's always the, the the that multifaceted, you know, strong woman built all this empire. But then she has a very sensitive, right? Yeah. And usually it's always, you know, in relationships too, you know. That's yeah. when we always break. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I absolutely love the the red hair too. Thank by you. The way. It's fake. I gotta pay for it. <laughs> oh, you're looking like a red. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I what? that's why I kept it because people say they think it's real. So I'm it like, looks like it. It looks natural. Yeah. It 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 definitely becomes you. Yeah. I ask you a question here while we're still in the to hot yes. topic section. So, listen. So you you're placed in a room. You're placed in a room with a hundred people. Yeah. If you're better than all of them at one thing, you win one hundred million dollars. What are you doing? Oh boy. Um, I'm running out of the room. You're running out. Yeah, of the room? I'm not a. I'm not. A, I'm, not a, I'm not. I'm not this type of company. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Yeah. I don't. I want to be able to to know what I'm better than uh yeah 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 you yeah, know yeah. what i mean yeah some people yeah. they like the that best thing, thing i would be better at is running out of the room and letting <laughs> people have opportunities because that's really what i've you know my life uh i tried to, you know to live my mother's legacy that was always trying to uplift uh you know other people so well it just makes you know it's uh it makes me feel good too you love helping people i do i love to see people thrive and win i i, I get a dopamine high. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, come on, let's go. Yeah. You know, it, it, we all have our strengths. You know, yes. I can't sing, I can't dance, I can't do anything. But sure as hell, if I see somebody that can, oh <laughs> man, everybody's gonna know about it. And everybody, you know, like because I, I love to build people up. Sometimes, you know, I feel like people don't see their potential until somebody else, right, mm -hmm. um, sees mm -hmm. it from outside, and. Uh, you know, I had people that pushed me too, and it feels good to somebody, right? Yeah, 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 that support. That's why I said I, you know, from social media yesterday, posting you coming to the show it was so much love that you were receiving. People are coming even into my DMs. People really, really yeah, love that. That's you, it, so yeah. that's so good to be Actually, around. I want to just to, to let me shout out a couple people. Yes, uh, go ahead and shout so out. So the Black J, Little Naja Bella, that was here. Yes. Okay, the yes. Future Star and yes. all the crews, a whole bunch of artists, one better than the next. Yes. Uh, Black J, who introduced me to Black J, Mike, Carmen, Oyeda, you know, Natasha, the whole crew in Queen, 
my whole crew in the Bronx, Brooklyn, everywhere, Harlem, everywhere. <laughs> Liddy travels. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, I have a lot of uh, support, loving friends. Yeah. Yes. And For a, a long time, too. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. I love that. So without further ado, Liddy, you are the woman of the hour. So we're going to get into Ooh. your story. <laughs> Thank you for that little you know, introduction of us just, you know, like I said, today is Grateful Friday. So while we're here, we're going to give you guys nothing but positivity and good energy. And we're going to move right along with you, Liddy. So let's go right into everyone that I talk to. The first thing I have to ask them is where they get the names, because everyone has these creative names here in New York City. You going by the name of Liddy, where did the name of Liddy come from? So in the beginning, kind of, uh, you know, running around, spinning the block. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was, uh, you know, people call me Linda Lit. Okay. It's actually, I, there's even a song with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with really? it yes. You gotta hear that one. Yes, yeah, says Linda Lit. Uh -huh. um, but then after that, uh, I was doing a workshops, uh, mm -hmm. breast health education uh, for boys and girls uh, in Suffolk and Asa County, you know, in high school. And um, I was doing this workshop for three days straight. And I did it the first day. The second day, I came in. And this boy, right at the end of the hall, he goes, yo, Miss Liddy. And I was like, that's it. And mm. that was it. Liddy. Miss Liddy. And that's when you became <laughs> That's Liddy. it. That was it. I kept it. I have a doll. I have a doll. I wrote a book. I kept it. I kept it real. Listen to Liddy. <laughs> like <laughs> wow, I really became. So yes, yeah. yes, yes. I really. I took it. You know, I'm like, OK, that makes sense. Yeah. And remember, I told you, like, from the moment you walk through the door here at the studios, you're just full of energy, full of positive energy at that. Very lit. Uh, definitely for the culture. Like like you said, we say lit. You were lit and it was in a good way. I have enthusiasm for, for life, you know. I yeah. really do. I have to, enthusiasm for learning. Um, you know, everything's a, to me, it's an adventure because I don't really live on this earth. I live in this dimension where mm. everything is, you know. Everything that. is peaceful and loving and everybody's happy. Everybody's enthusiastic. I um, love that. Yeah. So I try to, you know, make peace with the real world. It's difficult. You know, mm -hmm. I'm Pisces, you know, we're a little bit. You're water. We're up there. Woo. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. But, uh, uh, you know, yeah, I have a, I don't know. I'm in a good place now, too. I did have a few rough years. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like for anybody out there, whatever moment you're going through, it's a lesson. I promise you. Just mm. look at it. I mean, I know even if you're underground, mm -hmm. there is a lesson there for you. You have to discover it. Once you come out of that little dark place, forget it. You're invincible. Wow. I love that. It's really a test. It's like school, you know, that, that's university of life. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, Liddy, let's get into your journey here. So yes. I, now we know where that name came from. Um, and so let's get into your journey. I saw so reading. I seen that you had your start in the industry, modeling and acting. Let's talk about that. Oh, my God. I was like. <laughs> ages ago yes uh -huh. well at 17 well at seven years old in elementary school where i couldn't sit still where i was told daily calm down sit down you're crazy you can't do this this is insane mm. linda calm down sit down now this sounds familiar probably to many children out there mm -hmm. i looked outside the window and said this is just not that's got to be a world out there that it's you know it just mm -hmm. wasn't enough this was <laughs> elementary school uh, at 17, I left. I went to Milan. I uh, kind of bamboozled my mom to think that I have to go study philosophy in Milan mm -hmm. <laughs> when, there's, <laughs> when there's philosophy in my hometown. Anyways, I did. I went to college for literally two weeks and I was like, no, nah, this is not going to. I'm like, America, college, America. I'm like, America. So I said, by college. And what country and did you say you came from? Where from Italy, Italy, Milan. Yes. Okay. So I ended up in L.A. Mm. That up. So you came from Italy to LA was the first place. Yes. Oh, nice. I remember clearly uh, landing at LAX and crying. Oh, my wow. English was like broken and crying. I was like, oh my god. Mm. And like, and then I tell you something even better. I was staying at the Ramada Hotel, <laughs> and what comes up? The Jeffersons. Mind you, we have the Jeffersons in Italy, dubbed in Italian. True story. Okay. And I love, it was like moving on up. Yeah. To the east. That was like my favorite show. My Me and my mom loved that show. And, but hearing it in English was, it was different. It was huh? different, you know? So it was like, but anyways, just cried, happy, arrived, and I never wanted to leave. 
in LA. In LA. I, I love LA at the time. You know, yeah. it's a, now if New York fits me better. Yeah. My personality as a European. You. Yeah. Okay. Because LA is a lot of driving. I'm a bad driver. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I had, I learned a lot in LA. You know, it's mm -hmm. like it's a, it's, a, it's its own world. Yeah. It's, its own, you know, yeah, you know, universe. So what happened? So when you you got uh, in LA, were you discovered as a model? Nah, I, I was never. Listen, I was never good at nothing. I was, I was always barely average. To me, it was just, you know, the opportunity to travel. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, and just survive. Um, you know, I wasn't like a supermodel. I was doing catalogs, showrooms, whatever, it would, any, any little job mm -hmm. just to sustain myself. Mm -hmm. And then I tried the acting thing mm -hmm. <laughs> with this big accent. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple of things, a couple of commercials, you know, but it was tough with that. You know, they like, oh. you have to work on your accent. I'm like, oh. but then I'm thinking, I'm like, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you ever yeah. heard when he says neighbor? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he's got to, you know, yeah, yeah. so. But uh, the acting, you know, was interesting. Again, everything was an experience, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I met so many people, you know, LA, you always meet somebody. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. really, yeah. And I so how it. was your first, I mean, did you, while you were there, so do you, you loved LA, you said? I mean, your I, experience there. I, I did, did, I did. I uh, First, I lived in the Valley. Okay. In uh, Venice. I lived in this building, you know. In the San Fernando Valley, all these buildings look like Merrill's place back in the day with okay. the, you know, the pool, everybody knows each other. And you said the San Fernando Valley? That's yeah. where I live in. Tilden San Avenue, Fernando. Tilden Avenue, man, I still remember. Tilden Avenue, mm -hmm. very nice. And then, Sherman Oaks, and then I got a driver's license okay. <laughs> and off, uh, you know, 101, 405, I took off. The 405 is crazy. I know. Yeah, so you, I, I see why you left. You, you no, the, the drive. Yeah, no, come on. I can't. The four hundred five. I try to avoid. That I need highway. a helicopter. <laughs> yes, <laughs> a helicopter out there dealing with that. So, did you enjoy your experience? Or did you have any bad in experiences that make you not at all? Leave? Okay. No, not at all. I met a million. You know, I yeah. met. Uh, I, I'm not gonna throw name around, but yeah. I met, met a lot, a lot of, people of people when yeah. they were just starting, you know, and here Very too, nice. you know, it was 20, 30 years ago. Yeah. But uh, no, I loved it. And then I moved to. Did you move here? No. Yeah. Then I moved to eight, 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 uh, Third Street and Robertson by the oh, Ivy. In LA. Okay. And then my mother passed away. Okay. You know, they called me that she was uh, terminal, so I flew back to Italy. It just happened that quickly. Yeah. She didn't know? No, no, no. She had cancer for 20 years. We're going you back guys and forth. Knew it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She was going back and forth and everybody and metastasizing her lungs and then her liver. And wow. Yeah. She oh. hung, she hung. She hung in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, my condolences, even though in your Yeah, that was yeah. my that was my everything, man. That yeah. was my my entire world. So when I came here. I arrived broke and broken. <laughs> it in was, New York? Yes. Oh, gosh. I called my girlfriend because, uh, again, my mother passes away. My boyfriend at the time leaves me married, uh, married my friend. Really? Yeah. 99 was not a good year for me. <laughs> it's he okay. married your friend? Yes. He, knew, he, that, he yeah. knew she was your friend? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, yeah, yeah. She was a friend that was around you? And yes, her? yes. Yep. So she wasn't a friend? I forgave them both, man. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, it's all good, you know? Yeah, but that was unfortunate. It is what it is. Too. Maybe it was meant to be, so I came here, you know? Maybe I would have never made it here, you know? That happened in L.A.? Uh, we lived in, I lived in L.A. with him. And the, yeah, and, and that, then Where was he, the friend that he came Then he, I brought him to Milan, because okay. we were in my hometown. We were going flying to Milan just to, mm -hmm. to work, mm -hmm. and that's where it happened. Oh, wow. And that year, yeah. Okay, and then you lost your mother, and then you came to New York? Then I called my friend Celeste that I knew from Rodeo Drive. I used to work at BCBG oh. on Rodeo with her. Okay. And I called her. I said, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I'm going to lose my green card, you know, and you can't stay away for more than a year. Oh, wow. And she goes, don't worry about it. Just get catch a flight. We'll figure it out. Mm. So that's how I arrived here. She was on, she lived on New York, Essex, finally. Yes, okay. Essex and Clinton, and I lived on her couch. I slept on her couch. Mm -hmm. Her and her friend Carrie had a job, and I was mm -hmm. like the housekeeper, you know, whatever. I would clean up the closets, cook, you know, anything to yeah. just be in New York. How did you feel? Uh, the the culture shock was it different completely from you coming from LA to New York from Milan? New York did is you... uh, uh, New York. 
you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. New York is tough, man. It's yeah. cement jungle. <laughs> Really? You gotta, you gotta really bring the tug out. <laughs> yes, really? it's, rough. it's rough for, especially for a woman alone, a family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's rough. You gotta. How did you feel? What was a diff What was your biggest difference from LA to New York? Like from you? I like, I like the, the thing that I like about New York. I can walk around. I, I'm a walker. I like to. I don't even need to do anything. I just sit on a bench and people watch. I love it because mm -hmm. you see so much. Yeah, it's so you know for my brain. It's like dopamine <laughs> did you experience like for me the the energy of new york is yes. incomparable yes it's like yes. no other city and if has... you're not fast enough you know what happens yeah, I love so that they kick you on the side move <laughs> you know this is why i think it works for me I, I was just telling him i said i i love to move fast i do everything fast i talk yeah. fast i walk fast so the, you know I, the light you can you know what i mean the tourists over there and they're, they're like the you know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta roll. Yeah, exactly. You gotta keep moving with that, with New York. Yeah, definitely. So, like, I want to know, like, your how did you feel? So you you're here during the transition. Did you feel like this is home? Like, when did you know? I knew right away. Wow. I mean, I knew America was the final destination when I landed in Los Angeles. I knew it. I always knew. I, the plan was always America. So America. Well, you know, all the girls in my hometown were planning, you know. You know what I mean? The boy from the wedding, this and that. I was thinking, how am I going to make it to the final destination, which is here? And the only person that did not tell me I'm crazy and did not talk me out of it was my mother. I used oh. to call my mother from L.A. and cry because, you know, the language varies sometimes. Mm -hmm. I used to go to parties. A guy will come by and say, hey, what's up? What you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, uh... I'll be right back. And I never go back. I'm like, I got to learn the language. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so you know, it was rough, but my mother always told me, absolutely no, stay there. Yeah. How did you, so how did you become so fluent? Because right now you sound, you sound really good. So what, what did you learn? Again, I'm empirical, you know, never, like I could never learn from a book. I can't, I can't learn the, that, that way. There's another way than us neurodivergent people learn. We learn from senses, music, music, music. By the way, you know, many songs, I'm like, oh, this is what they're saying? Oh mm -hmm. man, because I would make up crazy words, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, but music, music, movies, easy movies like Problem Child, Home Alone, you know, stuff that really? even if you don't understand the plot, you know. Wow, and yeah. Home Alone, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you kind of understand, you know. You start learning new words yeah. and uh, reading, mm -hmm. you know, do, do do reading my way, you know, what I'm interested in. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. We're going to go into a quick commercial break. And right when we get back, we're going to get back into your story. Yay. Definitely. <laughs> you found the new, the new Party 1019, New York's number one for throwbacks.
You found the new, the new Harvey 1019, New York's number one for throwbacks. What's up, everybody? We are live. Afternoon, Party 101.9 and iHeartRadio. As you, if you're just tuning in, we're talking with Liddy. Liddy was just letting us know, you know, how she has become fluent in English uh, in <laughs> yes. your story. And you are reading these books and all of these things. Let's continue to take off from where you were talking. So you're reading these books, the type of books that have taught you the English. So let's get into that some more. Yeah. So you know, uh, I know I always bring it back to that, but because I know there are a lot of people out there that would uh, will relate to this. Mm -hmm. um, this world, you know, it's really not about two parties, rich, poor, this, then the other, the third. It really is about narrow, typical people and narrow, divergent people. Narrow, typical people are the people that built a world for themselves. And narrow, narrow, divergent people have to fit in and live in this world. Mm -hmm. And you see a lot of youth that struggle with addiction, uh, mental health issues, and incarceration, mm -hmm. which are all interconnected mm -hmm. um, because of this neurodivergency, because we learn different. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not a, a, a specifically a book. Uh, we are, uh, uh, we need to be, uh, you know, moved uh, with senses. Yeah. Uh, our learning process is different. And music is a big part of it. That's what you, 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 you'll see that a lot of neurodivergent people are addicted to music and if you're going to be addicted to something please really music is the best thing you can the be best addicted medicine, yeah it's medicine mm -hmm. um so that's 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 uh you know so how does it work with neurodivergency you, you you know you obsess uh over something and so you you want to learn about that specific thing this mm -hmm. is why you see a lot of kids you know they're incredible and genius let's say in engineering right mm -hmm. sound engineering you're like how did you learn this it's, you know Mm -hmm. self-thought because yeah. again that brain works you know hyper focus closes in and you go for that and so that's how i learned you know i wanted to learn english i wanted that's to learn powerful. the culture you know very powerful yeah i wanted to go back to you um the you know your mother had you know was stricken with breast cancer right mm -hmm. and so how did that affect you even though, you know, I know you moved to New York. That was the next step. You moved to New York, you leave L.A., and then you go on with life. But I'm still sure that you were carrying the loss of your mother. So how did that impact you on, you know, your transition here? And just how did you? The hardest thing in my life. Yeah. It was the hardest day, hardest thing, experience I've ever had to go through. When I lost my mother, I lost the only person that truly understood me, mm. uh, you know, that pushed me. Um my mother was everything, my entire world. Um, I, I, I declined. I really did. I didn't want to live, to be honest with you. You know, I was masking it, you know, making believe. You know, I always had to fake this happiness. Now I'm finally, I don't have to, like I said to you, I surrendered. I know where I'm at in life. But as a young person, I had to mask having ADHD. So you got to try to fit in this world that, you know, it's not really built for you and uh, then mass this pain and it's a lot mm. yeah but it, it was a tragedy that's why I, mm -hmm. you know when i hear people that lose a loved one like that it can really take you from you know from 100 to zero overnight and how did you for those that lose someone you seem like you're doing much better now what advice would you give someone that's going through grief and loss to help them just you know they'll never recover completely clearly but what is some Leave the legacy of that mm. person. Leave the legacy. There's always a legacy. Uh, leave the legacy of that person. Um, I, for example, mm, you know, uh, developed a bill. Uh, it's called Honora Legacy Act. It's now uh, up and running, uh, you know, should pass possibly this year uh, in, with uh, Harlem Senator uh, Cordell Clear. Mm -hmm. And it's a bill that's very dear to me. It's called Honora Legacy Act. And now uh, we'll provide biannual screening and breast health education to all incarcerated uh, females in uh, New York State. Let's talk so about that's, that. Uh, yeah, so that's, you understand, it's the legacy why. People mm -hmm. ask, why, how does that all add up? Your mom mm -hmm. there in Italy. My mother, I grew up 
uh, you know, I, I grew up, I think my mother built, built me for this, uh, you know, Liddy persona, you understand? Mm -hmm. uh, as a child, it was always about others. It was always about the most marginalized. My mom had a preference for people that nobody wanted to deal with. Oh, you wow. know, that's beautiful. That, yeah, because she always said, listen, when I used to say something, I'm like, mom, you just gave him 10,000 lira. We had liras at the time, not euros. I'm like, well, we, we, we broke. She goes, oh, we have each other and we have a roof over our head. She was right. You know, so she was always like really sensitive to, you know, people, the most marginalized in society. Mm. And uh, so I absorbed that. I uh, love from that. her. Yes. I, and I love that the part of living the legacy and also helping women inmates in yes. jail to get screened Absolutely. because people don't realize just because you're in prison does not mean that cancers go away, that your body is not impacted by the uh, sickness. If illness. anything, it will come in prison, you know, Even with, the, with the, the food that they're eating. Right. The, the, the conditions of prisons today for a woman, especially what mm. it does to your, you know, mental health, does your physical health, your immune mm. system. It's, it's going to break you. There's no screening. Um, you know, there's no outlet really. Uh, you know, wow. the women are the pillar of society. These are the ladies that have children out there. These are the mothers, the aunts, the sisters, the, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, they're needed. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. That is so good. Healthcare the, in health, prison. In very prison important. That you've been able to do. And now are these for the pe women that you're helping? Are they here in New York? Uh, uh, with the bill? Yeah, with the, yes, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is now. I mean, it would be great, it would be uh, you know, nationwide, but mm -hmm. for now, it's in New York. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and it, it would be great too if that can travel right mm -hmm. to more places because, like you said, women in prison, whether they're in New York or they're in LA or Florida, wherever they need to get screened. And right now, there's also a growth in incarceration in females. If you see statistics are going up. More uh, cancer? No, more incarcerated more females. More incarcerated females. Wow. Yeah. Wow. More incarcerated in general. We know that. Mm -hmm. You know, they, you know, there's more uh, prison being built than schools at this point. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of uh, but women, right women, now. women, which, wow. would, you know, it, it, when you look at statistics, women are incarcerated for what? Domestic violence, addiction, right? It's always some type of, you know, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, human trafficking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awful. Let's get back into um, you and your, your journey with, you know, I, you're all about, you know, empowering and impacting people. So let's yeah. get into your journey. Where did life take you as you got settled here? We see that you're living the legacy. Where does the journey take you after this? Like in New York, what did you start doing here to get planted? So I got diagnosed with cancer in 2011, you know, and uh, I have two, two, you know, I was married. I, I am married. I have two sons at the time they were little. And uh, to find out that I, you know, I had the same. Cancer as your mom? Yeah, you know, the same, yeah, the same journey. You know, it was, I kind of knew, I kind of knew. I don't know, it's very weird, but I kind of knew. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I found out, I got extremely upset. And I mean upset. Like, no, no pity party, none of that. I looked at myself in the mirror and said, mm -mm. not going to say the word, but no. I said, I, I spent blood to be here, learn the language, learn this, do, 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 do. I have a nice little life now and you're going to take it all away? Mm -hmm. Hell no. <laughs> so I literally, no, really, I refuse to die. Yeah, I love I that. refuse to die. I was mm -hmm. like, I don't care. I'm not, you know, looking at this. I don't care. Me, you have to decide, literally, that you are going to be the exception. Yes. Just like success. Yes. It's the same thing. Right. No, you don't quit on it. I am going to live. Yes. Period. Period. I argue with God. I said, I'm going to live. He said, go ahead. Show me how you can. <laughs> <laughs> it's 14 years later. <laughs> yeah, no, really, really, really. And, um, you know, and then I met my partner, Donna, uh, you know, in the charity, First Company Pink. And uh, we created a gut check campaign for, you know, breast health education, legislation and justice. Very important to us. You know, because it's all inclusive. I don't care who you are, what you do. Healthcare is for everybody. Healthcare and education are human rights, mm -hmm. even in undeveloped countries. Yes. So, yeah. And so you took your own story again, what you were going yeah. through, to help other people. Everything you find a, a way to. I you improvise. Know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and help I other people. Each each yeah. time you you went through something. So what ends up happening? You told God, you know, I'm going to live. And like you said, it's 14 years later. How was the journey though? Dealing with it though, was it tough? 
you know, even with the made up mind, like how was that yeah, so, navigating with all so, that? So again, my partner Donna gave me, see how it's important, you know, woman to woman, she gave me the opportunity to express myself, uh, you know, the way I really wanted to express myself. And, um, you know, we embarked on this journey. We passed the law in 2019 called Shannon's Law, the lower mammogram age to 35. That was our first bill. We also have a third law. It's called Siena's Law. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll provide breast health education, graduate education in uh, schools across New York State. So we work on legislation. We published three books. You know, we did a bunch of stuff. We did Fashion Week. We published music. Ah. We started, got shot records, you know. All right. <laughs> She kind of like was the mother that I didn't have anymore and left me, you know, she said, go and do it. Mm -hmm. And I needed that. And so, you know, it was all going good. But in between time, because I had a mastectomy, because I had a lot of uh, health issues, my immune system after chemo is never the same. Mm -hmm. I would get a lot of infections. I lose the reconstruction. And I be, I'll be honest with you, the worst thing was people telling me, ah, you're all like, what do you need breast for? It's okay. Just... Which, listen, to each his own. Some people can make the choice, some people can't. And I feel like everybody should be free to make the choice that is good for them. And I wanted to rebuild. I didn't want to take a shower in the dark. I didn't feel, I felt like a boy. And that reminded me of my childhood when I was, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I was always skinny and I looked like Pinocchio. I didn't like that. It took my identity as a woman, that little femininity that I needed because then I got the thug in me. Mm -hmm. I needed that. Uh, counterpart so i needed this reconstruction so finally after a million issues galore mm -hmm. i had my last surgery dr uh, david light of nibra on on, uh, on long island best ever mm -hmm. um and i had a transplant of my they transplanted it's called latissimus dorsiflap they transplant uh, your dorsal muscles to the front mm -hmm. And so you don't have implants or anything? I do. I do. I, I need that too. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all like nice. They took the radiated skin away so I don't have to worry about it. I'm good. Oh, very uh, good. It did a number for my mental health. And mm -hmm. that's really what I wanted to say. Everything, and I mean everything and anything, if you look today, it's related to your mental fitness. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Every issue we have, Every everything. Mm -hmm. If you are not if the central office is not open and running mm -hmm. and there's no CEO, yeah, nothing works. Yeah, nothing works. Nothing Absolutely. Works. I want you to, uh, to hold that thought. We're going to go into a quick commercial break. Sure. We're going to get right back into <laughs> I that. I love you. Yes. you. Let me talk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A quick commercial break. You found the new, the new Hardy 1019. New York's number one for throwbacks. Flowing from the heavens. heavens, high frequency, my favorite number seven. Keep feeling me, no miles exclusive, only for a king. Got my own bag, no need to brag, I'm too bad. I'm too bad. I'm manifesting my show, I'm directing, I want it, I got it. Got it, got it. You can't have it, cut from a different cloth. Can't be bought. LA to NY, I got it. By Coastal Queen, it got a bling. Princess cutting the ring, I'm who they wanting to be. I'm in my world, always the life of the party. I pull up in the foreign. If you ain't getting money, leave me alone, cause you boring. This year we copping a mansion. Acres, no neighbors. Shaking all of the haters. I ain't asking no favors. I'm out of this world forever, that girl making moves, I'm outside Refuse to lose, running it up, you know my man can't get enough When I pop out, they can't step out, keep my name out your mouth Natural body, be on my body, L.A. Kia hottie Get, get in this bag, all of this cash, you know I'm getting it fast Making it last, oh she hot, she about to get past No gas The new, the new Hardy 
What's up, everybody? We are still live on LA Key in the afternoon. I am LA Key. We are still kicking it with Liddy on Party 101.9 and iHeartRadio. Liddy, let's get back into it. You are the woman, not only of the hour, but the woman that is here to impact people's lives for good. You know, from everything that you're going through, you're using it to impact and empower. Let's get into, um, before we leave, you know, to talk about how you're using music as well to empower and impact people. You know, how you're taking music from, you started the, la the label, is, is it Get Yeah, Check? it's a movement, you know, Got Check Records. Get Check, yeah. Get Check Records, yeah. Yes. Got Check Records was born for the fact that, you know, I told you, I, I'm, a, I'm a culture stalker, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> never a, um, you know, an exploiter or a culture vulture, but I, I love it. I don't know why, maybe in a previous life, I don't know. It resonates. With Everything you, yeah. is very, you know, um, I, I used to live in Harlem. I felt right at home, 116 to 7. It was the best days of my life. I'm just, I don't know. So I you like live, the music, you know? The wow. stool, the thing. So you lived in Harlem to any Brooklyn? Yes. What is your favorite borough, by the way? By the way? Oh, boy, I can't. I'm going, I got can't. <laughs> <laughs> I always, you know, if I'm in the Bronx, it's FBX or nothing. <laughs> you know, Liddy. Um, but what's my favorite? I, I do, okay. I love all the bars, but I do love Harlem. I am Har a big Harlem. Yeah, I, uh, I don't nice. know. There's something about Harlem. I don't know. I just, it, 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 I, I see Harlem as how it used to be in the 70s, you know? Yeah, like yeah, this, yeah. It's got so much history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I love Let's, it. That's amazing. Let's talk about Get Checked. Um, now, is that a record company? What is that exactly? So, Got Check Records was sort of like my effort again to start the culture. I wanted to be part of music in whatever way, you know, mm -hmm. and, and help. And so, you know, I said, yeah, why not, not, you know, the fastest way to relate a message, especially to younger people is music. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, that's so true. So we more. did hundreds of workshops and I mean, uh, everywhere and anywhere you can think of, mm -hmm. um, including Harlem and charter schools, the boroughs everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I figured the best way to open a workshop would be with a hip hop song, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that relates to, you know, cause you, like your music, um, it's got that hip hop, you know, I'm tough, but then again, you're <laughs> relating a message that is empowering yeah. and positive. Yeah. So everything can be, you know, delivered. It's just how yeah. you deliver it. It's how you deliver it. Exactly. So they love that. that mm -hmm. You know, we would open with, right? With yeah. the video. Yeah. Um, and I said, all right, so this is how, you know, that's how I started, you know, playing with music. The first song we made with Justina Valentine from uh, Wild and Out. Then we did some songs with Mabasi, ah. which is uh, Pop Smoke's brother, and a whole crew from, uh, you know, Five Town College on Long Island. And, you know, my boy Cardi, uh, who else? Um, I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> you work with that many But artists? we did, yeah, we did. No, not a lot. But we did, you know, I, I, I had a lot of help. Yeah. I do. A lot of support? It, yes. Yep. Yep. And you know, that was one of the things I told you. I said, I seen a lot of support, but it's like when you do good, good comes back to you. And then you get that support of the people, you know? Yes. How do you feel getting so much love and support on this journey of you trying to do so much and you doing it, but then you got the support of the people. How does that make you feel? You know, I, 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 uh, I'm really blessed with that. I am. I try to, I try to really be as honest as I can be. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started, you know, I had a lot of enthusiasm, but the ego is a very hard thing to leave behind mm -hmm. for anyone. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Because then you get caught up in the whole respect, this, that, and that. But the truth of the matter is, nobody can make you feel any type of way if you don't allow them. Mm -hmm. So once you slowly, you know, build your inner confidence from your experience and what you want to deliver, mm -hmm. you surrender and, that's when people think respect more than try, you know, I'm not trying any, listen, I have the time. I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. But um, that's it. I just go with the flow, try to do the best I can, mm -hmm. you know, but music that. is the vector of everything. And let's, and speaking of that, let's talk about how you said when you got in here, you were just saying like how that is basically the thing that just, gets you going like you need music let's talk about some of the ways it has healed you just specifically like some of the ways it's healed you it's you know done so much for you let's let's get into so that. I, I started as a child listening to classical music mm -hmm. 
Um, I love classical music. Uh, grew up with Chopin, Tchaikovsky, all that stuff. And then I went, um, I wanted to be a ballerina. I failed. And so I got angry and I started listening to heavy metal. <laughs> heavy metal music. <laughs> I swear to God, I was like off the bun and screw everybody. Aww. I'm going to be a rebel. <laughs> so I started to listen to that. Then I went into, you know, the Madonna, Duran Duran, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston. Yeah. You know, don't forget I was in Italy still, you know, that's where yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. was working yeah. there, you know. And then. But those are some of the greats you named. Michael yeah. Jackson, oh Whitney Houston, God. Madonna. Oh my God, Michael Jackson. Yes. Whitney, Whitney, Whitney. <laughs> that voice, man. Beautiful. You can't, you know, the voice is an instrument. It is. Yeah. And uh, just the way, you know. It's brilliant, brilliant, it's a beautiful woman. And she was gorgeous too. And and what happened here? You, I didn't even know you got into heavy metal. So what happened where you transitioned to hip hop? Because as soon as you get in here, hip -hop you're like- in Milan, in Milan. Okay. And then as soon as I got to Milan, you know, started, you know, to like crew. <laughs> started with a few different things. Uh -huh. And then my arrival in LA it was over. It was with all hip -hop? about Pac, some yeah. of the hip hop that you like, you know, Pac, Biggie, uh, Pac, Soul, yes. uh, you know, yes. but a big Tupac, Tupac, yes, Pac, me too. Big, yeah. I love him, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. big Pac. dear mama, yes, dear mama kept <laughs> me through. You have no idea, dear mama <laughs> made you know miracles every Thanksgiving. Wow. That song is relatable for millions of people. Millions of people. People don't realize what Tupac did for the culture. Yes. Not just even hip hop. He was beyond hip hop. Yes. You know? And he is a ball Universal. of energy, too. A ball of energy. A ball of energy. It, it, you notice the impact is just like he's still, every artist that I, that comes here that, that listens to music, each one tells me how Pac influenced yeah. them. That he's a prophet. Just, wow. He's on right. And here we are, 2024. He passed in 96. We're still talking. I live about on this Pico man. Boulevard when that happened. Really? Right in yeah. LA. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah. And you now working into the studio, quad studios where quad he studios. was. Quad studios. Yeah. I tell you something else. Legendary. So the guy that used to run quad, legendary, they did actually a piece about him behind the music. His name is Roz, was Roz, peace to his soul. Mm -hmm. But Roz used to run quad. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the day, and he's the man that knew every story. He told me every possible story that you won't believe. Wow. You know, Wu Tang, Pac, Pac got shot. He's the guy that called the ambulance. Right? Oh my so, you know, like, and to me, I, I used to take him downstairs. There was a place called uh, Tonic, it was a little bar. It was, <laughs> he was like, I'm going to get you drunk, and then you tell me all the stories. Because to me, it was like watching a movie. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But he had so much knowledge in the, in the yeah. music history. I, 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 you know, Alicia Key coming and recording. I mean, just, you know, like crazy stuff. Wow. And for somebody that loves music, it's exciting. Yeah. And I, I, I can relate to you like that. Like yeah. you're listening to this. Nice. Just... <laughs> I, I, that's why I love quad. I, that's why, you know, it's it's family there, you know? Oh, I wow. feel like, you know, you see the views from the window. It's over. It's like, ah. You know? Wow. Yeah. I definitely got to see those views. <laughs> Let's talk about what you're currently working on, Linda. Like, what are you doing right now? Oh, my God. So I went crazy stuff as always because I follow, you know, an inner thread. Uh, you know what I feel like uh, today, um, especially in America, America being such a big country, it's mm -hmm. a lot. It's very chaotic because there's a lot. There's a lot of people, a lot of differences, a lot of things. It's chaos, right? Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of different subjects and different things within education, within legislation, within justice are not really, pro uh, you know, proposed in a big view that somebody can really see how everything works. Mm -hmm. It's always very compartmentalized. We compartmentalize everything, you know, gun violence a month, this month, mental health month. Everything mm -hmm. is a month, a T-shirt. Mm -hmm. And then we don't make the interconnection. We don't connect the dots. That's, right, right, right. right. Um, also in school too, you mm -hmm. know, the way things are thought, you know, it would be nice to connect subjects because yeah. it, may, it gives a mind more. Yeah. So I started with Got Checked, as I said, Got Check Records, and then I had a couple of rough years mm -hmm. and um, never, never give up. What did Jay-Z say? It says the best thing we ever did, we never, never stop. Never give up. Yeah. Yes. We never stop. That's right. <laughs> So I was in a really dark place. Uh, it was, but I said, you know what? Maybe this is this is where you learn the most. Mm -hmm. You don't learn in success. You learn in failure. Yeah. And so I kind of lost a lot of things went away. And um, then I created Gut Check to harness your intellect, which is more than just breast cancer. It's a woman empowerment, but you know, 
uh, we use a lot of words, empowerment and how, through education, through mm -hmm. resources, through, uh, you know, mental health education. Women really need that. Yeah. Women are, uh, you know, overwhelmed, raising kids, doing this, mm -hmm. doing that. Uh, you know, they're not, it's not back in the day when they stay home and, yeah. you know, today they, they multitask mm -hmm. uh, like crazy. They yeah. need all the support. Yes. Um, you know, mm -hmm. and it's all interconnected. You know, people don't realize they don't realize that your gut health, this so stomach important. here, yeah. this is where I think 85% Every of your dopamine is produced. Yeah, yeah. So if this is a mess, you're a mess. And when you're a mess, you can't function. And, in, in, um, speaking of that, you know, the gut health is so important. A lot of diseases that are coming, they, they start in the gut. People don't realize that it's, and not to go too far into the health, but how important probiotics and prebiotics are for your, your gut. To keep super, everything in check. Super, super yeah. important. Yeah. Uh, kombucha is something yes. that I'm I'm I crazy that. about it. Yeah. Yes. Because, you know, the biodome is affected in this country. You know, we're over medicated. You know, mm -hmm. every two seconds, people are on antibiotics. Yeah. That stuff destroys everything. Everything. It takes weeks to. And and, and, and then don't put it back. And a lot of people yeah. don't realize you got to put it back. With Medi the exactly. Exactly. Because yeah. the, the antibiotics that you're taking. Give me a hug. I want to kiss you because I like a lot. <laughs> I do because now we're speaking to, yeah. you know how many people out there don't, don't really know that and they're taking so many antibiotics and they're destroying all of the gut. And they're, they're like, I'm tired. Um, but you know, yeah. they got the gut that they, all that is because of my It's function. killing all the bad, the, the, yeah. the, the, the back, the good bacteria as yes. well. It doesn't just take out the, 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 the bad. It takes out the good. Then you're low in dopamine. Your mind doesn't work. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're big on health and wellness as well. Listen, I'm a I'm a real person. Do I, you know, I, I, as I was saying before, uh, everybody knows Liddy. I'm not, you know, Mother Teresa, nor am I this like, uh, you know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I don't like when people put me in a pedestal that I have all the answers or that I am, uh, you know, this perfect uh, human being. I messed up more than, you know, I still mess up. Uh, but yes, I do. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a slow, I'm a, I'm a late bloomer, but yes, I do now never too late. realize it's never too late. Never too late. That's yeah. why I love you. It's never too late. <laughs> so I, you know, I walked this path and I realize now, uh, you know, yes, the importance of, for me, especially mental health, mm -hmm. because of everything else then, uh, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? If, if this is, the light is on if, here, yeah. uh, you know, if the light is on here, you can tell people work out, take the thing, just do this, nothing, it's closed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand mm -hmm. it's here that has to and that starts from here yeah so it's all one you know and it's an act action people have to understand action come from you everything starts from you mm -hmm. nobody's coming to do anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. although the educational system could help by implementing you know a real uh, you know a, a strategy of coping skills yeah. teach youth how to cope I'm, I'm learning how to cope with things now. Yeah. I wish somebody would have told me 40 years ago. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. there's, there's way to cope with things. Yeah. Um, good ways and bad ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and one way we don't want them coping is through drug addiction and through all of these different addictions versus, like you said, it's, it's so about that mental health. You have to have peace within. That's... You know? And and the drug use is not going to help. It's going to take you further away from yeah. what you need. Um, before we close out, I want you to talk to whoever it is, and you can tell them whatever you want to tell them. You know, and and specifically someone that has been you've been through a lot of different things, losing your mother, fighting through the cancer, and you were able to fight through it. And beyond um, off of air, you talked about certain things that you've gone through. So you're a fighter. What would you tell someone that is going through a lot right now? What would you tell them in the camera and those that are listening in order? Because Listen to Lydia because I, I was in a dark place two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what we loved? We didn't know it. When you came yeah. in, you came with all this energy. Yeah. You had no idea you'd gone yeah. through anything. I know someone is struggling at home right now or listening. They're like, what can I do to get out of this, pl this place? I'm what tell would you, you tell right them? now? I can promise you that you have all the answers. Not only do you have all the answers, is that the biggest addiction today collectively is escapism. We're trying to escape the moment, escape the trauma, escape the uncomfortable mental health situation, escape everything. That's the one thing you have to change. There's no escaping. You got to look in that mirror. You got to deal with it. And you got to start making plans. And the first plan is, is my mental health okay? Because people think it's all mental illness or not mental illness. No, it's, it's, it's a spectrum. Mm -hmm. You know, you're either mentally fit or you're not. And there's a spectrum in between. 
you know, there are times I'm the 